So I made this documentary. It's really bad. It's really bad, but I just had to put it out there and I felt like if I left it alone, just showed the video, it'd be a complete waste. I just needed to talk about it a little more for it to be worth posting. So I took this documentary research class at college. The topic was Dr. Levering Tyson. He was the president of Muhlenberg. He's a really cool guy, he did lots of cool stuff. And it sucks that in this class, the, the way you make a documentary basically ends up looking like a bat mitzvah montage or something like that. Um, which is just a waste. It's a waste. This was like, there's so much cool stuff to talk about. And like, it was a great opportunity to make a documentary. Um, you put in so much work and like, no matter what you do, it's going to look like a piece of crap that is not going to be, not going to be presentable to anybody, which I hate. I hate doing all this work and it's just not worth it. It's going to be bad no matter what, like the format is like a slideshow of just pictures that like, I guess they're interesting pictures, but it's just like, it's so boring. It's so bland. I'd rather like talk about it and show emotion and show pictures and videos and stuff. The coolest thing about this documentary was I got access to videos taken of my college in the 40s that I put into my documentary. And that was like the most interesting stuff because it's video, um, not just boring images. But it was so cool to see like people walking where I walk to class every day. And one of the cool things this guy did was um, he turned it into a naval base in the 40s, which not many people know about. Um, but like in these videos, it's just soldiers walking up and down Academic Row, which just average students walk up and down now with no knowledge that like all these military guys were training here our age back in the day. So I guess, yes, you could argue it was good practice for like storytelling and just getting someone's narrative together and putting it into a form like story-like but with visuals. Yes, I could have made it better, but like that, that format of just slideshow like images, I don't know, I just hated it. It made me not want to do a better job. It made me, it didn't motivate me to do something cool because like I couldn't really do something cool with it. I'd recommend just giving students more control with what they can do with these documentaries because like they're cool to, I don't know, I like my guy, he was a cool guy like to tell more stuff about them in like a better way where I was interested in telling the story rather than just like putting together something because I had to which is how it felt it's just such a waste of a good opportunity um, so I just I want to show you the documentary I want to tell you about it first because it's boring he modernized the college Muhlenberg College he modernized Muhlenberg College it used to be provincial and now it was cosmopolitan after him as the teacher kept saying over and over again um yeah it'll talk about him he was a radio guy that's so like putting together this documentary made me just like so unsatisfied with like telling somebody's life because how can you take all these experiences and all these things that he did and cared about um and put it into something that's like three minutes three or four minutes it's impossible and you just feel like you're doing him a disservice no matter what. Like, it's really incomplete. Um, but I tried. My group tried. Uh, and I hope you tolerate it. Here it is. In Dr. Tyson's inaugural speech, he expressed his wish for Muhlenberg to develop a curriculum to keep step with the world and to inject into each student a spirit of inquiry to inspire him to seek new facts in the world about him. Inaugurated on October 2nd, 1937, Dr. Levering Tyson became the fifth president of Muhlenberg College. Breaking the mold of his predecessors, Tyson was the first president who was not a minister. His progressive attitudes, ideals, and policies brought many changes in many areas, including academics and student life. He emphasized focus on individualized attention to each student, acknowledging that doing so would better improve students' academic performance and overall well-being from freshmen to seniors. He expanded the faculty, curriculum, and physical layout of the college to accommodate this goal. To help incoming students transition from high school to college, President Tyson headed the addition of a new dormitory for freshmen. The college designated the former Allentown Preparatory School building as West Hall, known today as Brown Hall. Tyson devised an unconventional approach to evaluate his school through the eyes of the students. He established a committee of nine seniors from all three academic programs to obtain a fair and comprehensive examination of the college, essentially using them as campus spies. 
He explained that it was for the advancement and achievement of the Greater Muhlenberg and to ensure that resources were being used efficiently. Through the testimony and opinions of these students, he fired the campus physician. Tyson feared that Muhlenberg's educational policy was antiquated and too focused on religious requirements that would not create an environment that fostered critical thinking in order for students to defend themselves from blindly accepting propaganda. Under his leadership, the college replaced the academic requirements of Greek and Latin classics with government and economics. He advocated for a new social studies department, including history, economics, sociology, and political science. By 1948, 100 years after Muhlenberg was founded, the Department of Social Sciences was the largest in the college. President Tyson also promoted social progression of Muhlenberg, admitting the first African-American student and hiring the first female professor, Bertha Paulson, in 1943. When wartime hit, he asserted that the college should do its best to continue life and learning as usual. However, financial crisis struck the college as more students were drafted to the army and enrollment declined. To make up for these losses, Tyson brought the V-12 program to Muhlenberg, making the college a naval training base. New student cadets and new money came pouring in. Bills from the government made up one-third of the college's income in 1944. Admiral William Fechtler, the chief of naval operations, said on the final commencement for the V-12 men that Dr. Tyson's guiding genius has been a vital factor in Muhlenberg's wartime achievement. In early 1942, Tyson approved an accelerated program of study so that students could complete their education sooner before they were drafted into the military. Tyson thought they would be of more use to the military if they had a college education before they drafted. The accelerated program provided courses that were useful to military training, such as political military geography and the technology of explosives. By the summer of 1942, 230 students were enrolled in the program, which was one-third of the student population. While Tyson supported the war efforts, his primary concern was the education of his students. He fought the draft for deferments on behalf of students and faculty who were drafted at that time. He was persistent, writing countless letters to the military and attorneys to advocate for the members of the Muhlenberg community. Dr. Levering Tyson's presidency of Muhlenberg can be described as student-oriented and forward-looking. Former student Charles J. Harris said that Tyson urged Study, boys, study. And that he was the Pinion wheel between old and new, transmitting our old and unused potentialities into new channels of work. Before Tyson, there was a lack of participation in student activities. After his tenure, Harris commented that You are fortunate if you can find a seat at any student body meeting. We're moving forward with Dr. Tyson. Hope you enjoyed that somewhat. Like, subscribe if that convinces you to do so. If you like this, if you like me, check out this video right here. Thanks.